welcome to the Wednesday workout, April 29th, 2020. In for some gymnastic strength, finishing up with a little bit of work capacity. You'll like it. It's short, fast, intense. It's a great workout. For the gymnastic strength work, it's gonna be a 15 minute alternating EMOM of three movements. The first one is a 30 second belly facing handstand hold. The second one is a 30 second single arm overhead hold. And then the third movement is a 30 second hollow body hold. That's for the practical. The tactical is pretty similar. It starts with a handstand, but instead of belly facing, you're kicking up straight into the wall or freestanding if you can make that happen. Then it's gonna be a double overhand hold, either dumbbells, barbell, kettlebells, uh, holding a plate overhead, something like that, uh, but it's both arms at the same time. And then finishing up with a hollow body hold once again, you could do a bent hollow if that works better for you. For the practical Metcon, it's going to be three three-minute AMRAPs with a one-minute rest in between. First set's going to be eight two-handed kettlebell cleans, followed by five burpees over the kettlebell. Afterwards, you're going to rest one minute, and then it's going to be the next three-minute AMRAP, which is going to be kettlebell swings, eight of them, and then eight burpees over the kettlebell. Each time the burpees increase for the last three minute AMRAP it's four kettlebell snatches or dumbbell snatches per side, four per hand so a total of eight and then it's going to be 12 burpees over the kettlebell. Like I said each AMRAP the burpees increase. The tactical is structured the same way as the practical three three-minute AMRAPs. The main difference with the cleans and the burpees, the burpees are gonna increase just like the practical. The cleans are actually gonna decrease from five to three to one, but the weight is gonna increase each round. And now for everyone's favorite part of the workout, the question of the day. So. If you were able to trade one year of your life in for $30,000, how many years of your life would you trade in? So one year equals $30,000. Would you trade in one year, two years, five years, 10 years? Uh, these, these types of questions are <laughs> some of the toughest sometimes. So take some time, think about it, and let us know in the comments, how many years of your life would you trade in at a rate of $30,000 a year. Like every great workout, we're gonna start with a warm up. Putting 11 minutes on the clock. We'll see, it might take us a little less, maybe a little bit more. We're gonna start with some toe walks. Interlock your fingers, bring them up overhead, get on your toes and walk around for 45 seconds, all right? We're warming up our calves. We're stretching out our entire bodies up over our heads, getting things fired up, getting them ready to go. Do another 20 seconds. Calves are starting to light up, that's good. They're starting to cramp up. Maybe take a little second rest and then pop back up. You want to lean to one side, lean to the other side, whatever you want to do, just trying to open up basically that entire line. Next we're going to do some heel walks. Fingers interlocked behind your back, standing nice and tall, chest up. We're going to walk on our heels this time, 
This is called dorsiflexion. All right, so we're gonna practice this dorsiflexion, walking on our heels. And then we're also at the same time gonna be pulling our hands away from our low back, all right? I don't want you bent over like this. I want you to stand up nice and tall, great posture, and pull the hands away from the low back. You should be stretching out chest, a little bit of bicep, um, really a lot of the things that are tight in the upper body. Also a good chance to squeeze your shoulder blades back together. Chance to stretch out the tight areas of your upper body. All right, so done the toe walk, done the heel walk. You can do some good mornings. So from the side, this is what it looks like. We're standing nice and tall, feet about hip width apart. I like to start with everything in good posture, rib cage down, abs tight, butt tight. And then from here, we just hinge down. So knees are gonna be relatively straight. You can bend them just a little bit. Come down as low as you can with a flat back and then fire up, all right? Slow down and then fire up. I like to use the down portion as a little bit of a hamstring stretch and then the up portion as a glute activation uh, hip hinge. If you wanna put your hands on top of your head, you can here. Just going through each time, maybe trying to go a little bit lower. It's okay if you bend your knees just a little bit, but we don't want like a full knee bend. All right, next we're gonna do some scap push-ups. So you're gonna get on the ground and we're, we're gonna squeeze our shoulder blades back and push them apart, all right? So what that looks like from this position, everything nice in alignment, Squeezing our shoulder blades back, pushing them as far as, apart as we can. Squeezing them back, pushing them apart. If that gets to be too much, you can come down to your knees and we can do that same thing. Squeeze them together, push them apart. All right, if you wanna get a little bit more range of motion, you can do some circles. I like doing some circles, do a little side to side. Basically, we just want as much range of motion between the shoulder blades as possible as we're going through that. So push them out, pull them back in. All right, we really want to get those shoulder blades to move a little bit more freely. All right, next we're going to do the hollow body hold. So we're going to do a lot of this today. We're going to get on our back, our low back pressed into the ground and full hollow body hold, toes pointed, quads engaged, and then hands behind the head, shoulders off the ground. This is too much, we can bring arms down. That's too much, we can bring legs in. You could also bring legs in, bring arms back, uh, or one leg out, one leg in. Biggest thing, low back needs to be in contact with the ground. If it comes off the ground, if you start arching and you, you see a little bit of daylight there, you wanna go back to the position that you had contact with the ground and that's the position you're gonna be in. If I go too far, my back comes up, then I'm just gonna adjust it back. So hollow body position and relax. Next, we're gonna do some Superman. Superman's just the opposite. Laying on our stomach from here and then thighs off the ground, arms off the ground. So chest is up off the ground, thighs are up off the ground. You're squeezing your glutes, you're squeezing your low back, you're squeezing your upper back. This is kind of that full Superman position. I love toes pointed. This one we're flexing our calves really hard. I like to maybe give a little muscle squeeze, squeeze my glutes together, maybe squeeze my heels together. You need to bring your arms back here, that's okay. Out to the side, out to the back. I also like to kind of get a couple wise T's and W's while I'm on here. Just fire up that upper back. Really just getting that nice and lit up. All right, next we're gonna do 45 seconds of push-ups. 45 seconds sounds like a lot, but basically how we'll do it, we'll start slow. 
You can just do a couple slow push-ups from this position. Lower yourself down, hold it for a second, raise yourself back up. We'll do a couple of those. Hold it, back up. We'll do a couple at some normal speed. If you need to go down your knees, you can also go down your knees. All right, big thing we wanna see, you're still going. Big thing we wanna see, arms are about 45 degrees off the chest. We're not up here doing push-ups, and we're not so tight that we're just doing tricep push-ups. So that's 45 degree angle. Get a couple more in. All right, body in a nice alignment, head to toe, butt's not in the air, hips aren't sagging. All right, so last thing we have. <laughs> By last thing, it's four exercises, two rounds worth. We're gonna start with some jump hinges. So five, five jump hinges. Here's the hinge. All right, notice I'm not squatting, I'm just hinging down, jumping up. Hinging, jump, hinge, jump, two more. All right, predominantly glutes and hamstrings, not so much quad. Next, 10 kettlebell swings. Grab your kettlebell, bring it out, we'll do 10 of these together, hiking it back, popping those hips up, belt comes up, about face level. Not really counting, that was probably 10, right? Feel about 10, yeah. All right, next we're gonna do five two-handed kettlebell cleans. All right, so getting around the kettlebell, two hands, we're gonna bring it up and catch it on the side of the horns. All right, so from here, comes up, catch it. Five of these. All right, it is a hip hinge as well. Nice explosive movement. It's just not quite as much travel with the kettlebell swing or as the kettlebell swing. Five of those, then we're gonna finish up three kettlebell snatches each side. This is a 71 pound kettlebell. I'm gonna get a little bit smaller one. You could also use dumbbells for dumbbell snatch. The only thing we have left in the gym is either the 71 or an 18, so. Three snatches per side. All right, make sure you are getting a hip hinge each time. Sometimes too light is hard to do the movement also. All right, we got one more round of that. So five jump hinge, all right, jump hinge here. Try to get as high as you can. Two more. Five jump hinge. Grab that kettlebell. Show you some swings from the side this time. All right. So from here, hike it back. Swing. Two-handed cleans. Show you from the side again. Stand over the bell. Pull it up. Catch. Remember, hips each time. Five of these. Catch it. And then three snatches each side. I'm gonna do some dumbbell snatches this time. Three per side. All right. Two. And 
other. Oh, look at that. Two. Right on time. 11 minute warm up. Should be, uh, whew, should be feeling pretty good. Ready to go. We'll see you in the gymnastic strength. We have a 15 minute gymnastic strength workout. It is 15 minute alternating EMOM. So every minute on the minute, you're gonna do 30 seconds of a different movement. There's three different movements. If you repeat that, it's a total of five rounds of those three movements. All right, so I'm gonna show you the practical first. It's a 30 second belly facing handstand hold. One. So belly faces the wall, walk as close as you feel comfortable, squeeze your belly, squeeze your butt, actively push up with your arms. You want to look down uh, in line with your palms, you can, or you can keep your head facing straight, point your toes, keep everything nice and locked in, make sure you're actively pressing. All right, so 30 seconds of that, we're done. You have about 30 seconds to rest, and then we'll get into our second movement, which is a single arm overhead hold. So single arm overhead hold, same type body position, same tight everything, just held up overhead with one arm. So we're gonna start in about five seconds. I'm gonna grab the 18 right here, snatch it up, one minute hold, keeping everything as tight as possible. Squeeze your cheeks, squeeze your abs. All right, you should be in that hollow body position versus like back bent this way. And then we're starting with one arm, actively pressing up that whole time. If we get to 15 seconds, you wanna switch arms, you can. Otherwise, just every other round, you'll, you'll switch. I understand it's five rounds. So whatever your weaker hand is, do that side one more time. All right, and relax. Last movement for 30 seconds, 30 second hollow body hold. All right, we're gonna start in about 15 seconds. Shake it out. A couple ways you could do this. I'll show you some variations as we go through. All right, once again, I'm showing you the practical version in three, two, one. 30 seconds of hollow hold, low back in contact with the ground, just like we talked about in the warm up. Hands behind, toes pointed, quads engaged. Quads are engaged because we want to take stress off the hip flexor. If this is too much and your low back can't be in the ground uh, in that position, then just pull your legs in a little bit. Still point your toes. We got five seconds left. Three, two, one time. All right, that's round one. Remember, five rounds total, three movements. I'm going to show you now the tactical version. I'll just alternate back and forth. Tactical 30 second handstand hold. Uh, if you can freestand, that's awesome. Uh, if you need a wall, we're doing back facing the wall. So in 10 seconds, back facing the wall, 30 second handstand. All right, in three, two, one and kick. All right. One of the things I like to do, shake my hat off, is uh, really press up on my shoulders, squeeze. I like to squeeze my knees and thighs together and pretend I'm holding like a sponge between my knees. And that gives me a lot of stability in that handstand. And then slowly, my feet will pull off the wall and I'm freestanding right here for the time being. So 30 seconds, time's up. Come on down, 30 second rest, and then we'll go to the overhead hold. Difference between tactical and practical for this movement is we're doing double hand. So either barbell if you have it, uh, two kettlebells, a plate up overhead, just something, but we're doing both arms at the same time. 
So three, two, one. Got the double 18s, the Howling Monkey in one, and the Rep Fitness Pink Kettlebell in the other. So just to show you once again, body in straight alignment, actively pushing up. All right, arms are straight. Whew. Holding, you got it. Squeeze, yeah, do a quick about face. Got five seconds left. Three, two, one. Relax. All right, good deal. Last one, same as the practical. It's the hollow body hold. You can do 30 seconds worth. Again, this is a lot of midline stability, a lot of shoulders, overhead. We're working on gymnastic strength, uh, which is a lot of static type work, handstands, planches, levers, all those fun movements. These will help for all of those. Three, two, one, hollow body. Once again, if you can't keep your low back in the ground, you can bend your knees. Bring your arms up, sometimes that helps. Sometimes I can find my arms here, toes pointed, I can still keep my low back. But as soon as I start bringing this back, sometimes my back comes up off the ground. A lot of it depends how tight you are. If I've been doing a lot of sitting, my hip flexors are really tight, my low back tends to come off the ground. Three, two, one, relax. All right, two rounds down, three rounds to go. I'm going back to the practical to show you once again. Uh, but yeah, for that hollow body, same with even overhead positions in general. If you find it's hard to keep your low back in the ground, you might want to think about massaging your psoas, loosening that up a bit. I'm going to show you another version of this practical, another scaling option you can do. Three, two, one. You can come up here, all right? And basically you're going to pipe. You want your head between your shoulders, actively pushing up right here, all right? So we're working that active push, or in the same position, just body super straight throughout that whole alignment, all right? Whatever you feel you need a little more help with, and time. If you feel like you need a little bit more shoulder stability, head in that position, more pressure on your shoulders, do that pike. If you feel like you just want total head to toe or tip to toe uh, core stability, that's a good one as well. All right, we're back to the single arm overhead hold. This round I'm gonna do 15 seconds each hand just because it starts to get heavy after a little bit. So bring it up, clean, this is a half ass clean. Uh, I was gonna snatch it and then I stopped halfway through. All right, squeeze the abs, press up overhead. All right, we're getting 14, 15. I'm gonna switch sides this time. Do 15 seconds on the other side. This feels pretty good for me. If you wanna get up on your toes, you can too. Really practicing that full handstand. All right, and relax. Good deal. All right, once again, hollow body hold. Uh, if you want to do a couple of hollow body rocks, you can as well. Make the time go by a little bit faster. Or not, maybe it goes slower. Uh, it depends. Sometimes I find them easier than just a static hold, and sometimes they're way worse. So, all right, five seconds. Hollow body hold. Three, two, one. Hold it. Breathe. Try to look up if you can. I always am trying to like look at the clock, which sometimes that puts extra strain on your neck that you really don't need. So just look it straight up in there and I'll tell you when your time's up. All right, I'm gonna go to the bent. The back's starting to come off the ground. Five seconds, three, two, one, time. All right, two rounds left. All right, I'm gonna show you the tactical once again. Main differences are the first two movements. So tactical 30 second handstand hold uh, back to the wall. So I'm gonna do that. Shake out your shoulders, if they're getting tight. Uh, maybe do a couple bends back and forward. 
and three, two, one, begin. I like to practice a soft kick into the wall. This way I'm not as reliant on the wall. Remember squeezing knees together, pressing up actively. If you wanna practice bringing one leg off the wall and then slowly squeezing your knees together, working on that freestanding. All right, that was 30 seconds. Woo, it's 33 seconds. You got a couple extra seconds in there. All right, about 15 more seconds to rest. And then we're gonna do that overhead hollow body hold. We're gonna do it with a plate this time. Um, keep looking up there, because there's a computer up there. The camera's right here. Oh well, I'm new to this. All right, ready? Three, two, one, overhead hold. I got my plate, feet together. Again, actively pressing up. If your shoulders start to get tired, you can let them drag and then maybe just do a couple scap presses if you want. Remember, main thing, body's nice and tight. I'm not lax here. I don't have that low back arch. Squeezing my butt, squeezing my abs. <sighs> Breathe in three, two, one, time. All right, hollow body hold. We've got one round after this, one round left. All right, 15 seconds. Shake my shoulders out a little bit. All right, five seconds. We'll get in that hollow body hold. Three, two, one, begin. Engage that core. Once again, I like pointing my toes. It activates your quads, which take, uh, it takes some pressure off your hip flexors. It takes quads or hip flexors, I know, but the small hip flexors inside here, your psoas, all the muscles here, you don't want them to be activated. You want your quads and abs to be the only thing doing the work. All right, three, two, one, relax. All right, sometimes what ends up happening with those low uh, hollow body holds, especially if your back comes off the ground or your hips are just really tight, this will take over and all the tension will be right there. So last round we got, last round, last three exercises, I'm doing the practical once again, belly facing handstands, starting in three, two, one. Remember, just walk up as high as you feel comfortable, but really what we're looking for is just the straight body alignment. I like to practice kind of this little handstand walk. Sometimes I'll touch my nose onto the wall. Whatever you feel comfortable doing. All right, judge your level of fatigue, judge your level of comfort, but really squeeze your pelvis, squeeze your butt, squeeze your abs, get a nice tight body alignment, and that was 30 seconds. Whew, my internal clock's pretty good. Just a couple seconds off. All right, two more exercises. Overhead single arm hold, and one last 30 second hollow body. All right, here we go, single arm again. We're getting the howling monkey. All right, and Begin, we'll clean and press that time. Do a snatch. All right, there we go. Cool, up overhead, everything tight. Pressing up with the shoulder if you can. Again, if you can, if it's just too much, let it sink down. You can do a couple small shoulder presses. Especially if your weight's light, and I know we have a little restricted at home with what we can use. Three, two, one and relax. Um, anytime you could squeeze your muscles more, it'll make that weight not only feel heavier, but it'll actually uh, help with the adaptation you're looking for. You will get stronger. That weight will feel heavier. Your muscles will feel like it's a heavier weight uh, and you'll actually grow just from that. All right, last movement, last round. 
hollow body hold. Once again, three, two, one, and up. I'll start in this position, see how long I can hold it. I'm gonna blame it on the fact that I'm talking while I'm doing this, but these are hard whether I'm talking or not. All right, I'm gonna bring the arms in. Slowly bend the knees. I'll leave one leg out. Maybe do another leg. Do some alternating. Just making sure that low back stays on the ground. All right, pretend. Three, two, one. Oh man, oh, I did the full hollow body the whole time. I don't know if you saw. I didn't have to scale at all. So, nice work. You just did five rounds, three gymnastics movements. Uh, a lot of cumulative effort uh, over time a lot of good body positioning a lot of time under tension it's just gonna get you really strong in those positions get your handstand better get your levers better get your abs tighter uh, in general it's gonna, just gonna fix your posture all right 15 minutes is up i will see you in the work capacity Welcome back. Now that you are nice and warm, you've done your 15 minute gymnastic strength. Now we're gonna get into our work capacity. It's three, three minute uh, AMRAPs with a minute rest in between. It'll take 11 minutes total, three minutes of work, minute of rest, three minutes, one minute, three minutes, and then you're done. It's gonna go by quickly. Uh, I'm gonna alternate between the practical and tactical. You should already know what you're gonna be doing. Uh, and have everything ready to go. Pause the video now if you're not ready. Get everything ready. All right, now that you're ready, here we go. 10 seconds, three minute AMRAP, starting the practical eight two hand kettlebell cleans, five burpees over the kettlebell. And begin, two hand cleans, bring it up, catch it. I like to catch it with a little bit of a soft knee instead of just like grabbing it midair uh, with locked knees. All right, once you're done with that, burpee, lateral hop over the kettlebell. Burpee, lateral hop over the kettlebell. Five of those total. So eight two handed cleans, five. Kettlebell, uh, burpee over the kettlebell. All right. For those of you that are doing the tactical, for those of you doing the practical, keep going. You got just a little over two minutes left. For those of you doing tactical, first three minute AMRAP, it's five cleans at 135 pounds, five bar facing burpees. I'll just do a couple. Bring it up. Power clean. Once you've done five, you're gonna do five bar facing burpees. All right, look, we're a minute 30 in. So you're halfway there, you have 90 seconds left. Keep going hard, hard as you can. Jump, turn. Go, turn. All right, keep going through that. About 75 seconds left. If you're doing tactical, keep going. Five and five cleans and burpees. If you're doing practical, guess what? We got one minute left. Eight two hand kettlebell cleans and five burpee over the kettlebell. All right, 50 seconds left. As far as you can. I did five, I have three to go. I'm gonna pretend I did those three. Now I'm on my burpees. Looking good. You've got 30, 
30 seconds left, 30 seconds left. Come on, finish strong, finish strong. Keep going, keep doing burpees, keep doing your cleans. We're almost there. You got about 15 seconds to go. All right, red line it, okay? There's only three of these AMRAPs and you're already almost done with the first. All right, we got five seconds left. Three, two, one, time. One minute rest. Grab a quick drink of water. Look at what you got for your next setup. If you're doing the practical, this next one is eight kettlebell swings and eight burpees over the kettlebell. So it was eight cleans, five burpees. Now it's eight swings, eight burpees. Eight swings, eight burpees. For the tactical, it's three cleans, but at 185 or 135. So heavier weight, less cleans, and uh, eight bar facing burpees. So the burpees go up, the cleans go down, but the cleans go up in weight. So. We've got 10 seconds left to our second AMRAP. We're gonna go from minute four to minute seven. Three, two, one, begin. Eight swings for the practical. If your bell doesn't feel heavy enough, you could also do single arm swings as well. Eight kettlebell swings, eight burpee over kettlebell. All right, again, three minutes. So this is quick, this is fast. All right, we're getting our heart rate super high. We're taking a minute, get our heart rate back down, and then repeating with a little different workout each time. So eight kettlebell swings, eight burpee over the kettlebell. For the tactical, we now have a heavier weight. We went from 135 now to 185, or 95 for the females to 135. All right, look, you're already at minute five. You have two minutes to go. One minute down, two minutes to go. When this says seven minutes, we're done. So three cleans, get set up, bring it up, catch it. Cleans might go slower each round, uh, just because the weight gets heavier. But movie magic, I have 185 right here. It's 115, but who's counting? All right, halfway done. 90 seconds left. Get those bar facing burpees. Get those bar facing burpees. Two foot takeoff, two foot landing. Try to land softly each time. Over the bar. Remember, burpees went up. Last time it was five burpees. This time it's eight burpees. All right. One minute left. 60 seconds to go. I'll do one more round of the practical with you. Eight swings, eight burpee over the kettlebell. All right. Doing great. Do three more, yeah. Cool. All right, I actually did eight that time. All right, 30 seconds left. Here it is. 30 seconds left of this round. Get those burpees in. Get those swings in. Or get those cleans. Get those burpees. All right, fast as you can. You got 10 seconds left. 10 seconds. Keep it going, keep moving. You get a minute rest after this. In three, two, one, time. One minute rest. All right, let's get some big exhales. Try to exhale twice the amount you're inhaling. Really helps clear the CO2. Get your heart rate a little lower. Grab a quick drink of water. We got 40 seconds. All right, round three, practical. So three minute AMRAP, one more time. 
four kettlebell snatches per side or dumbbell snatches per side. I'm gonna do dumbbell snatches because I either have too heavy or too light of a kettlebell. And then uh, we have 12 burpee over the kettlebell. For the tactical, it's one clean at 235 or 155 with 12 bar facing burpees. Here we go, 10 seconds. All right, get ready. Three, two, one, final three minutes. We stop at 11 minutes on this clock. Three minutes. We've got four, oh yeah, kettlebell snatch. Woo! With the 71, bad choice for not a kettleballer like myself. All right, do some dumbbell snatch, four per side. If you want to alternate, you can, or get four on one side, and then four on the other side. Whew. Once you've done four per side, guess what? 12 burpees. Man, these last burpees, gonna be a lot of burpees. So, same thing, lateral hop over. Whew. Going through, looking good, staying strong. Keep doing your burpees. Look at this, you're already one minute in. You've got two minutes to go. Keep doing them burpees. All right, those of you doing the practical, we've got my 225 on the bar. As you can see, clearly 225 pounds. You only have to do one of these cleans though. Get set up. Go. Ah. Caught it in the power pit. I didn't even have to squat that. It's amazing. All right, bar facing burpees. Here we go, 12 of them. Down, over, down, over. Let's get one more. All right, looking good. We've got a minute 10 to go. Minute and seven seconds to go. That's how quickly this is going right now. You're doing great. Now you got 60 seconds left. This is it. Grab your kettlebell, grab your bar, do some cleans, do some snatches, kettlebell snatches or dumbbell snatches, four per side, 12 burpees over whatever implement you were snatching or cleaning. All right, I don't even know what I'm on. I think a thousand, perhaps. All right. Keep it going. 28, 30 seconds left. 30 seconds left. Final 30 seconds. Final round. Final AMRAP. Here it is. Go as hard as you can. You got about 15 seconds left. Keep it going, all right? This is where it counts. All those reps before were to just get you tired. Now that you're tired, here's where adaptation takes place. You got five seconds left. Keep going, don't stop. Three, two, one, and scene. All right. Ah, nice work. I probably did about a third of what you just did, and I'm a little sweaty, a little smoked. Uh, catch your breath. Nice job, give yourself a pat on the back. That was a tough one. It's a really good program today. Uh, yeah, and join me in the cool down. All right, we'll give you a little bit of cool down and get on with your day. Take care. We're gonna do some lying figure four. So, bring one leg up, bring it over across. So let's start with right leg up and over across. Back leg is gonna come up just behind the ankle, pin it down, and then you're gonna try and lay back, try to reach your shoulder to the ground. If you want a little extra pull with your left hand on that right knee, you can do that. Just relax into that stretch. All right, it'll be like another 15 seconds, and then we'll switch to the other side. Just breathe, slowly let that shoulder reach the ground and knee reach the ground. 
All right. Slowly come out of that. And we're gonna switch sides now. Left leg's gonna come up and over. Right knee's gonna tuck behind the ankle. And just push that leg down. Again, now we use a right hand on the left knee. Provide a little extra pressure. And then our left shoulder. Just breathe and relax. Melt into the ground. Anytime you exhale, try and deeper, uh, deeper relax into that stretch. Do another 10 seconds or so. Feel the tightness kind of in this hip, low butt area. Um, that's totally normal. That's what we're kind of stretching out. Uh, also, thoracic spine, kind of that mid-back, and, you know, anything else that's tight in the chain. Slowly come out of that. We're going to do a little sideline chest stretch. So, face straight down. Arm is going to come 90 degrees off your body. Thumb pointed up. We're just going to push into that direction. What I like to do is I like to take my opposite foot, kind of twist it over help myself better get into that position. The biggest thing I see a lot of people not doing with this is not going perpendicular from the body. I'll see them go 45 degree angle. Oh man, I'm not getting much of a stretch. But if you put it 90 degrees off your body, perfectly perpendicular, and roll into it, you should feel your chest, you should feel your shoulder, and a little bit of everything else. Try and relax that shoulder to the ground. And then with your opposite hand, just push a little bit more pressure. Every time you exhale, maybe push just a little deeper. All right, and let's reverse that to the other side. So right arm out, let's bring that left leg over, push with your opposite hand, really feeling that stretch. Also, trying to rotate the pit of your elbow forward helps as well, kind of open things up in there. Might make it feel a little bit tighter. That's all right. We're just gonna stretch that out, breathe into it. Every couple exhales, just a little deeper into that stretch. Try and relax. All right, and whatever else you need stretched out, take your time, do it. You don't have any more time. That's all we got for you. So enjoy the rest of your day, nice work, and we'll see you tomorrow.